Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about slope and linear equations. We're going to talk about all the different ways you can calculate slope from a graph, from two points, from a table of values, or from an equation, whether that equation is in slope intercept form or standard form. And then we're going to talk about y intercept and how to calculate that. Then we're going to put those two concepts together uh, to be able to form a linear equation from any of those different situations. Then I've got six sample problems that have to do with slope and linear equations that we're going to solve and explain as well. Let's take a look. All right, so let's review slope. Slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. Another way we see that written is uh, delta y over delta x. Delta just stands for the difference or the change. We can also see that written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We just take the two y values of the points we have and divide it by the difference of the two x values of the point that we have. Or graphically, you might see it referred to the rise over the run. So how much it changes up and down divided by how much it changes left and right. So let's take a look at all the different ways to calculate slope. So in a graph, we're going to take two points. Uh, you want to take two points that um, you can figure out where they are. See those two points cross um, right at whole numbers. And then we want to see how much y changes or how much the rise is. So to go from one point to the other, we've got to go up by 6. And then we have to go over by 9. So the difference in y over the difference in x or the rise over the run is going to be 6 over 9. And then we can reduce that fraction to 2 thirds. When we have two numbers, uh, the first one we can label x1 and y1, and the second point we can label x2 and y2. So to find the slope of the line that goes through those two, the numerator is going to be the difference in the y's. The denominator is going to be the difference in the x's. So we subtract those out and we get 4 over 6. And again, reduce the fraction whenever we can, and we get 2 over 3. Now if we have a table of values, uh, it's very similar to doing it with two points. We just pick one of the points that we're going to use. So here, the 4 and the 2 gets us the numerator. And then the 6 and the 3, the difference of those two, gets us the denominator. And we can pick any point. One thing to keep in mind though, we've got to go in the same direction. So if we go 4 minus 2, we've got to do 6 minus 3. Don't switch it around and subtract the other way. We all, you can do 3 minus 6 and 2 minus 4. You just need to keep consistent. And then there we get 2 over 3. So now an equation. Notice this equation is solved for y. This is in slope-intercept form. We can just pick the number that is being multiplied by the x, and that's our slope. So 2 over 3 is our slope. Now if we have an equation that's not solved for y, we've got two different choices. We can solve it for y. So if I add 2x to both sides and divide both sides by 3, uh, I can solve for y. And then I can get the slope by the number that's being multiplied by x. Or we can look at this in standard form. So standard form is ax plus by equals c. So a represents the number that's being multiplied by x. b represents the number being multiplied by y. So to find the slope without converting it uh, and solving for y, the slope is negative a over b. So in this equation, it's going to be negative, negative 2 over 3. We just pick the a and the b value from the equation. And then negative a negative 2 gets us positive 2 or 2 over 3. Now let's take a look at the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is, on a graph, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. It is also the y-value when x is equal to 0. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So back to our same graph, the point where it crosses the y-axis is right there. And what's the y-value for that? The y value for that is negative 2. So we say the y intercept is negative 2. 
Now, if we have a table of numbers, um, the y value when x equals 0. So notice back at the graph, if we have whatever our y intercept is, whatever our y value is where it crosses, the x value is going to be 0. So if we look at the table and find where the x value is 0, then that also will get us that same point. The y value for that point is our y intercept. So for this, that's going to be y equals negative 2. Now an equation, again, if the equation is solved for y, it's in slope-intercept form. And we can just pick the number that's not being multiplied by x uh, with the sign. And negative 2 is our intercept here. If we have it not solved for y, again, we can do two different ways. We can solve for y and then pick off the um, y-intercept, which is the number that's by itself. Or in, in standard form, ax plus by equals c, the y-intercept is going to be c over b. So in this case, it's negative 6 over 3 or negative 2. One last thing I want to take a look at is um, parallel and perpendicular lines. Uh, so parallel lines have equal slope. So if we look at that same graph we've been looking at, y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. If we have another line with the same slope, y equals 2 thirds x, or y equals 2 thirds x plus 2, all those lines have the same slope of 2 thirds, and they're going to be parallel. Perpendicular lines have a negative reciprocal slope. So y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. What negative reciprocal is? First, reciprocal, we flip over the 2 thirds. So instead of 2 thirds, it's going to be 3 over 2. And then we make it negative. So if we've got y equals negative 3 halves x minus 2, that's going to be perpendicular to that. And anything with that slope, anything with a negative 3 over 2 slope, is going to be perpendicular to our purple line there, which has 2 over 3 as our slope. OK, let's take a look at these six problems having to do with slope and linear equations. On the first problem, we're just looking for the slope of a line that goes through 6, 2, and 3, 8. So we know the slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So y is going to change from 8 to 2. 8 minus 2 on the y. And the x is changing 3 minus 6. And we're going to get 6 over negative 3 or negative 2. Now, notice when we subtract, I did the 8 minus 2. Don't be tempted to go 6 minus 3 and get positive 3. You've got to subtract the same way. So you either have to go both this way or both this way, but we've got to keep it consistent. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong sign on the slope. All right, the next problem is telling, asking us to find the equation of the graph. So we've got to find the y-intercept and the slope. So the y-intercept is going to be right there. So the y-intercept is going to be at 3. The slope, now the slope goes down like this, so we know the slope is going to be negative. To get from this point to this point, we have to go down 3 and over 2. So our slope is going to be negative 3 over 2. And then our equation is going to be y equals negative 3 over 2x, that's the slope plus our y-intercept, which is 3. All right, the next problem, we're looking for the slope and the y-intercept of this equation. I'm going to do this two different ways. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our equation and solve it for y. Solving it for y is going to put it into slope-intercept form. So to do that, I want to subtract 5x from both sides of the equation. That gets me negative 4y on this side. 
I'm going to rearrange because x usually comes first. So I'm going to rearrange it and just put the negative 5x first and then the 8. Now to get y by itself, divide by negative 4. We've got to divide everything by negative 4. And solve it for y, put it into slope intercept form. We get y equals 5 over 4. The negatives cancel. And 8 divided by negative 4 is going to get us a negative 2. So our slope is 5 over 4. And our y intercept is going to be negative 2. So that's solving for y, putting it in slope intercept form, and then picking the values out. We can also look at it as standard form. So standard form is ax plus by equals c. So in this case, a is going to be 5, b is going to be negative 4, keep the sign with it, and c is going to be 8. So if we go to our equations for this, our slope equation in standard form is going to be negative a over b or negative 5 over negative 4. Cancel the negatives out and we get 5 over 4. Our equation for y-intercept is going to be c over b. c is 8. b is negative 4. 8 divided by negative 4 gets us negative 2. So two different ways to do it. We get to the same answer. All right, so what's the equation of a line that goes through 0, 5, and negative 3, 7. So let's first find the slope. So the slope, how much does y change? 7 minus 5 is 2. Keep the same direction. Negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. So our slope is negative 2 thirds. Now we got to find the y-intercept. So what we notice about this is this point has 0 in it for x. So x is 0. So whenever x is 0, then the corresponding y value is our y-intercept. So the y-intercept here is going to be 5. Now if we didn't have one as a point, we could have graphed it and saw where it crossed. Uh, possibly getting the y-intercept that way. Or there's another equation which I'll cover in a different video, which is the point-slope equation. Uh, but this we were lucky enough to have a point that was the y-intercept, so we could just get it from that point. And then construct the equation from there. y equals 2 thirds x plus 5. All right, here we want the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals 4 thirds x plus 7 and crosses the y-axis at 5. So the slope of a perpendicular line is going to be the negative reciprocal. So if the slope of this line is 4 thirds, then the negative reciprocal. So for the perpendicular line, the slope is going to be 3 fourths. We flip it over and we make it negative, so negative 3 fourths for the perpendicular line. And then it says it crosses the y-axis at 5, so that is our y-intercept. So we get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 5. All right, so what's the equation of this line? So let's take a look at the change in y. So slope, again, is the change in y over the change in x. And we can take any points and notice that y is changing by 5. 
and x is changing by 2. All right, so we have the slope. To get the y-intercepts, a little trickier. Uh, we could graph this um, and take the slope from the point 213 and see where it goes. Or we could just add another value to this table. So we know that we're trying to find where x equals 0 for the y-intercept. So if these are all changing by 2, by 2, by 2 to get a 0, these are each changing by 5, so minus 5, minus 5. So if we take 5 away, we would get 8. So we just figured out where x is 0. Um, sometimes it's not that easy because you'll get fractions, but you can either do it this way or um, you can also do it graphically as well. And if this doesn't work out neat either way, again, the point slope, which I'll cover in another video, also gets us that answer. But in this case, the y-intercept is going to be 8. So our final answer here for the equation, y equals 5 halves x plus 8. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments on this video or suggestions for future videos, just comment below. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. And I've got another suggestion for you to watch right here. Thank you and come back again soon.